Hello everyone, I'm Mimi Lichtenstein and today on Adventures in Luxury Travel, I have on Christina Consuegra with me. We are going to talk all about Colombia and I am so excited to be here with you today. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Mimi, for inviting us to join you on this exciting journey. <laughs> Well, I think um, it's obvious. Obviously, you represent Colombia. You're Colombian. You went to school in Canada, so I uh, have very, very good English and understand a little bit of the American-Canadian perspective. Um, I love every Latin country, but in particular, Colombia, where I had two trips planned right before COVID shut down the world. And uh, we were just talking before the show that one of them is being rescheduled for the September. So I'm beyond excited to get to Cartagena. And today we'll talk about that and all the other amazing places that people can go. Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's start with, um, as I usually do, a map to give us a little bit of an overview of the country. Um, I have a few pictures about most of these regions, but maybe you could just touch on, you know, what are the highlights of each of these different areas of Colombia? Of course. Thanks, Mimi. So this is a great way to start off Colombia because... This is the, the five main regions of Colombia shows how incredibly diverse Colombia is. It's the second most biodiverse country in the world. And this is thanks to the different regions. So Caribbean coast, obviously, as you can see here, breaks just off the coast from Panama. And Caribbean coast can go anywhere from like beautiful colonial towns to tropical jungles, vast beaches, deserts, mountains with snow peaks. And then you go down to the Andes Mountains, which basically takes you all the way into a beautiful cities like Medellin, which we can see here, which is very cool and trendy, very green and lush and cosmopolitan cities. This went from the, the most dangerous city in the world to the most innovative city in the world. Um, and obviously in these cities, you can find anything from art to culture, incredible gastronomic scenes. Um, and the Andes scenes in general is, is, is very diverse. You go from cities to smaller towns, such as Barichara, the coffee region, and Villa de Leyva, which are really exciting towns, beautiful architecture, incredible culture. A, you know, the second largest canyon in the world is right beside Chicamocha, a, a, right beside Barichara, which is the town here that you can see. It has beautifully preserved the, the architecture and culture of the towns. Mm -hmm. And then you can move on more to um, other regions, such as Los Llanos, um, which are the vast plains um, of a, it's the wetland savannas just on the east side of Colombia. And these plains are um, really exciting because uh, technically as an extension of the Amazon, it, it has an incredible diversity of wildlife and bird life. Mimi, I'm not sure. Do you want to uh, scroll forward so we yeah. can... Well, oh, so once we got the overview, I mean, we're going to deep dive into each one of these places. Um, okay, perfect. The biggest problem you and I have is that we could talk about this for, you know, five, six hours at least. Yeah. So this is going to be like the survey of Columbia. I have six pages of notes, you know, that I want to get through, but there's no way we'll get through them all. So we'll start with the highlights and see what happens. Um, I think what's so fun about Columbia, as you mentioned, such rich culture, great gastronomy, um, lots of active experiences, lots of museums, lots of fashion. It sort of checks all the boxes for people who love to have, you know, incredible experiences in another culture. And all of my clients love to be active. So I always like to throw in um, information on that. And this first one, I just love this picture because it looks so beautiful. And you probably remember my client who was here last fall um, went on an excursion here. Tell us a little bit about this area. So this is a great area. It's only one and a half hours driving from Medellin. Um, it's a it's a lake that was a basically it's a man made lake because it was flooded. So you have it's all these like islands, really beautiful sceneries. Um, only an hour and a half from Medellin or twenty minutes by helicopter. Uh, we really recommend it for people who want to do kayaking, paddleboard, jet skiing. It's great for teenagers and also for adults. So we can do a day trip or recently actually I spend three nights there and it was really exciting. There's a few little cool boutique hotels for, um, you know, adventurous clients and also a very beautiful private villa for those who want to stay a few nights. In ultra and I think, I think we did that for the day. So I think that um, a group of, of ladies who are friends flew in on a helicopter, yes. spent the day on the lake. 
They said it was one of the most magical days of their life, like a dream come true. That's how they felt about this place. And I think they went out on a, um, a pontoon boat yes. and then they climbed to the top of El Peñol. How many, how many steps is that? I forget. Oh God, I think it's around 600 steps. So, okay. And we have a picture of that later because we have a picture of one of the villas that you have over here. So again, just for being active and outdoorsy, it's such a great destination. And like you said, not too far from Medellin. So it's a great combination of being in an urban environment and then a little bit more out in the country. And it seems like there's a lot of opportunities to go horseback riding in Colombia. Yeah. Yes. So horses are a huge part of Colombian culture for many years. You know, horses were the main mode of transportation. Obviously, then came railroads, um, you know, vehicles, airplanes, etc. But you know, it's a big part of our culture. Um, it's and and there's amazing experiences to go horseback riding in, in jungles, mountains, and in the savannas. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful. I feel like something funky is going on with my photos over there. So I'm going to try and fix that while we talk. But um, also off of um, off of Cartagena, the Rosario Islands is another place where there's a lot of active things to do on the water. You want to give us a little bit of an overview of that? Exactly. So thank you. Um, the Rosario Islands are basically it's an archipelago of about 30 islands and it's only 45 minutes uh, on a boat from Cartagena. So this can be done on a day trip or this can be done um, on a multi-day trip. So ideally, you know, on a day trip, you take off in the morning, you head out and you can go snorkeling, um, scuba diving. We have some amazing scuba instructors who, you know, speak great English and have worked all over the world. We can also organize kayaking expeditions and a stand-up paddleboard, but it's a really exciting set of coralline islands um that you know you can go explore on the way back you can do this on a speedboat or on a bigger yacht so we work with a full range of, of boats and um on the way back you stop in at a lovely beach club have some fun drinks good you know seafood lunch um and then you head back into the city for the evening okay well it sounds amazing i know part of my trip was supposed to be going out to the rosario islands to um Go to one of the beach clubs, which is super fun. Um, yeah. And I think that, again, you're right in Cartagena. You have this great urban scene. And then you also can get out on the water and really enjoy yourself being out on the water. Um, exactly. So, all right. As I figure out the slides, we're just going to keep going forward. Caño Cristales. Tell us about that while I find a picture. Caño Cristales is a really exciting place. So this is, it's called basically the liquid rainbow. Um, or the, 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 the river of five colors. Some people say it's five, some people say it's seven. But basically, it's a very rare plant that during the months between, it's basically between mid-June to end of October, these, these, um, they bloom. And when they bloom, they turn into fuchsia, yellow, green, orange. So you go trekking. It's, it's, a, it's a rather remote. You have to fly over to La Macarena. I'm not going to say, you know, it's not super luxurious, but we have done it both ways. Some people go and stay there in these really cute little lodges, or some people we've managed to do some day trips where you fly in and out on a private charter. So the great thing is that once you get there, you go trekking, as you can see by the photos that you just showed, it's beautiful waterfalls. You go trekking in these like really stunning scenery, and it's a really one of a kind place. And Blooming season is coming up soon. So if you want to get in there before it all gets booked up, you have to start working on it right away. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And I think it's so nice when people, you know, they might have that on their bucket list once they see it, but knowing that you can't actually see that year round um, yeah. is important, obviously, in terms of planning which months you're going to go and what you want to do while you're there. So I love having insights from people like you about the best times to go see things because it does make a big difference. Um, when you're there on the ground. Of course. Um, okay. So I think that I actually just was able to do a little bit rejiggering. And I'm going to fast forward just so we could see the Caña Cristales because, as you said, the, the colors are so gorgeous. And there it is. There we go. Um, yeah. So beautiful, right? To be out trekking and, you know, end up at this waterfall with these beautiful colors. And you have, like, literally just long stretches of river just covered in fuchsia colored plants so it's it really is a stunning scene and it's something you can't really find in other places in the world so yeah 
Okay. Very unique to Columbia. Put it on your list. And then as far as mountain biking, um, you know, that's another great thing in many different areas of Columbia you could do. Exactly, exactly. So I don't know if, if those of you who follow biking, um, you probably have noticed that Colombians now are amongst the top a, a bikers winning, you know, Tour de France and um, a few of the other big tournaments. And, and biking has always been a big um, thing in Colombia. And with having so many different terrains and landscapes, you know, the Andes Mountains is such an incredible setting to do these um, to the sport. And it's not just like intense mountain biking. Yes, we can do like crazy descend down like a volcano, 2000 meters descending, like different ecosystems, like craziness. Or we can do something much more family friendly. And it's more like just off road biking or all terrain biking. Um, it's great for, you know, we adapt the terrains for different um, ages and, and intensity levels. Um, and, but it's just such, so beautiful. It's a great so place beautiful. to visit, you know, little haciendas and see the landscapes of the country. Yeah. I love being able to get out on a bike because you can cover so much ground and you can be out in these more remote off the beaten path places that give you a little bit more of an authentic experience. Um, you know, just naturally, if you meet people in their, you know, the little town or village who aren't used to seeing as many tourists as the people in Cartagena, for example. Exactly. 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 Um, and then fishing, that's something my 15 year old loves to do. So we're always looking to go fishing at different places. Um, a lot of the fishing in Colombia is, is it focused in one particular area? Is it, you know, this is net fishing, like in a river, ocean fishing. Tell us a little bit about that. It's funny. You know what? Each region has their own style of fishing and they have, you know, different types of ways to do their nets. Um, for example, in those llanos, you have like this artisanal fishing with like small, um, very artisanal made, you know, type of a, um, hooks. Um, then in the Caribbean coast, you have different than the Pacific coast. This is more artisanal versions. And then you have sports fishing. Colombia is a very exciting place for fly fishing and sports fishing, especially more remote areas, um, which is more in the Los Llanos region where you can find very unique, like the peacock sea bass and stuff like that. But think, for example, if your son came to Cartagena, we take him out to one of the little fishing villages just outside here, go out with some of the local fishermen, learn how to do it the traditional way and something different than what he's done before, right? And learn yeah. about the culture. Well, it's interesting. I once took them to Nicaragua and we were on the West Coast um, and we went out fishing with a local one day. And then the next day, my son wanted to go out again, but my daughters didn't and my husband wasn't with us. And so I said, okay, well, you can, you can go with him. And then after I let him go, I was like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But he was a very nice guy. They went down, um, went down the beach, caught tons of things, just doing, you know, casting off of the beach. And he had the most magical day, just him and this local fisherman. That's amazing. Yeah, That's so such fun. a nice story. Um, trekking, obviously, there's a lot of places to trek, lots of mountains to go through, um, a great way to be active in the coffee region and the Sierra Nevadas, like all over the place, I imagine. Exactly, exactly. Tons of opportunities. Again, very mild treks. We can do 30 minute nature walks, one hour to two hour mile treks. Or for those people who want to do much more intensive, you know, four, five, six hours uphill, you know, we always adapt to what you know, guests want to do. So it's, it's a great place. So many different opportunities and landscapes, ecosystems to explore. And a little bit later, we'll talk about some of the very unique and special accommodations in Colombia that are in some of these more remote places that will give you an opportunity to do it straight from where you're staying. Um, paddle boarding, river kayaking, more opportunities to get out on the water more horseback riding. And I love this shot because it's like an aerial picture looking down on people crossing a river on horseback. So if you have a teenager or you like to ride, which some of my clients do, Columbia is such a great destination. And of course the wildlife, um, the gorgeous, beautiful, colorful wildlife. I imagine a lot of these colorful birds are concentrated in the Amazon region. Well, actually, Colombia is has the highest diversity of birds in the world. Um, you can find over ten percent of the world of the world's bird population in Colombia, and we have a very high um, number of endemic species. So these are species you can only find in Colombia. So Colombia is probably like a heaven for 
Twitchers, which are the very, you know, intense bird watchers. And even just for people who are starting off um, as a hobby or just have an interest in wildlife. And yes, Mm -hmm. you can have so many different types of hummingbirds, toucans. Um, Sierra Nevada, as you mentioned, is a particular place um, where you can find the Amazon is very interesting, but there's tons of other places, you know, the Andes mountains, the the Janos region is just mind blowing to see hundreds, hundreds, literally hundreds of herons nesting in the same tree. So the entire tree is covered in white. So it's a very exciting place for bird watching. And I, I love having shows like this because I bet most people who have maybe thought about going to Colombia before probably have never heard of Los Llanos before. And now even just listening today about all of the amazing experiences you can have there gives them an idea that maybe they'll put that on their trip. Or we're going to talk about actually the um, remote destination you can stay in to see little critters like this. Tell us about this guy. So this is the capybara. Um, this is actually, it's technically it's the largest rodent in the world, but they m- look more more like a bear than a rodent. Um, and these are very particular to these types of uh, ecosystems, which are the wetlands, um, which is, you know, Los Janos region. So this is one of the many species of wildlife. Los Janos is actually probably the best place in Colombia to see wildlife. Um, and there's, you know, more and more little lodges and properties coming up specialized in these types of experiences. Mm -hmm. Well, it's fun. And I know we have another picture with him later. And then the whale migration, what's the best time to see the whale migration on the Pacific coast? The whale migration, the best time is going to be between July and end of September. So probably like August is going to be, you know, prime time because all the whales have already arrived. Basically, these are humpback whales that come in from Patagonia, South and South America to um, the coast, the Pacific coast of, of Colombia because it's much warmer waters to mate and also to give birth. So this is a very special time to see. And you can see, you know, so many sightings and they're so close, so gentle. It's a very special experience. Mm-hmm. I've taken my kids whale watching off of Baja, California. And the first time that you're in a little boat and you see one of these whales breaching and, you know, flying through the air is very exciting for an adult and definitely for a kid. Yes, indeed. It's so beautiful. Okay. All of those are fun experiences, but for some reason I titled this section fun experiences, but this is all fun experiences. Okay. Beach clubs off of Cartagena, so fun. You see some photos. There's a lot of um, dancing, music, happy people, enjoying life. In fact, some of them, when you go to their website to check them out, I think it might have been Blue Apple said something like, we are for everybody, but we're not for everybody. So essentially, yeah. they'll welcome everybody, but they know that they're not the right scene for everybody. So know the exactly. scene. Okay, so I have a couple photos of Blue Apple and then one from another one. Tell us a little bit about the scene at these beach clubs. So you're totally right. Each beach club is going to be for different types of people and what they're looking for. So, for example, when you want fun, dancing, good music, for example, at Blue Apple, you know, they say, like, if you want peace and quiet, go to the Maldives. You know, this is for fun people. Um, The food is amazing. The owner is just you know, incredible British girl. And she's um, used to live in Monaco and Saint-Tropez. And she's brought like that whole concept of good music, good food, good rosé, good cocktails. Um, Sundays, weekends are much livelier. Weekdays are actually calmer. So so they have both. And if you want to go with a family during a weekday, it's absolutely perfect. If you're perhaps looking for more for a party, you want to go during the weekend. At 3 p.m., there's always a dance class, and it's fun. It's like a, literally, it's a family affair. It's for all ages, so it's a really, really fun place. And it's re- and it's also, as I said, family friendly, but also for people who like to more vibey scene. Mm-hmm. And I love this photo for those people who are listening. There is a girl holding a umbrella, walking across like a slack line slash rope over the pool, or almost over the pool. So she must be rather confident. So every few weeks they have these performances. So they have like theme parties and, um, you know, it's been great. And every party has a different theme. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And they have these really cool little bungalows. So it's a a hotel as well. Um, You know, for example, we've had a number of families staying there and they absolutely loved it. 
Um, we recommend, for example, for people looking for more peace and quiet to go there during the week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, during the day, people come in to the restaurant and they have fun and there's music. At around 5 p.m., everyone leaves and there's only about 10 to 15 people left because there's only, I think, eight rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great. You know, you have this entire property to yourself. The food's amazing. They have dinners in different parts of the hotel. So it's a very lovely boutique scene and they really, they really um, love their guests. And the food is amazing. And what a fun way to end a trip too, right? Just making it a little bit more like a vacation, um, chilling out. And here's a few photos of Makani, another one that I know you love. More live music, you know, chairs on the beach. Um, again, you know, dancing. And this one had photos of kids in it. So I wanted to show that too, because like you said, you can go there. It sounds like perhaps you wouldn't want to go there with your young children, but particularly midweek oh, wow. is a great place. Yeah. During the week, definitely. During the week, definitely. Makani is actually much quieter than Lapo. So this one, for example, is going to be much more for like, it's and it's, a, you know, slightly more upscale in terms of the decor, in terms of the style. So, you know, what we try to look at is, the, you know, the profile of the client. Yeah. Are they younger? Are they older? Is it family? Are they more conservative? And then we always, you know, allocate or recommend a, a um of a, a beach club, depending on their style. And we'll ask them, you know, what do you want? Yeah. And, um, and we'll accommodate accordingly. And that's the beauty of working with people like us. We, you know, you find out the differences and you're able to match it a little bit better than just picking any random beach club. Exactly. Um, okay. A few adventurous experiences. So here's a picture of, I think the Canyon you were alluding to earlier where you can go whitewater rafting. Yes. Yes. Indeed, this is a very, this is the Chicamocha Canyon. It's the second largest canyon in the world, actually. Um, and it's a really exciting place. You have, and actually here in this canyon, you have three different rivers, you know, joining, or actually two rivers joining and creating another one. So it, it's a very, you have anything from level two rapids to level five rapids. Obviously, we like to stay in level three rapids, unless you're really going on the more pro side. It's a beautiful, beautiful ride. Beautiful. Um, paragliding. I happen to have done this in South America in my early thirties. I think I absolutely loved it. So for the super adventurous, you can do it where you are attached to an expert. You don't have to go off by yourself, no. but what a beautiful way to see, right? The canyons or, you know, near the cities. It's just a stunning perspective. Yeah. And this one is in Medellin. So this is, for example, a great example of how Medellin is a very cosmopolitan city, but within 30 minutes, it can be out in the mountains, countryside, and doing experiences like this. Yeah, love it. Um, and as we talked about before, the culinary scene in Colombia is very strong. And whether you're eating at a fabulous restaurant, Salele, I know is one of your favorites. I took a cooking class from them during the beginning of the pandemic, which was awesome. Their food is amazing, and I can't wait to go myself. Um, but in addition, having an experience with a chef where you're walking through a market like this and then going back with them to go make yourself, you know, lunch in the afternoon would be a super fun experience. Exactly. And these are experiences that we can do in all cities, whether it's Bogota, Medellin and Cartagena. And you can do them even in each city because each place has such a unique type of market, unique ingredients and fruits that you can find in those markets and each place has its own cuisine so mm -hmm. you're going to learn totally different things in each place and even so the coffee we haven't really touched on the coffee yet but obviously colombia is known for having very good coffee and for people who are interested in going to one of the coffee plantations or for learning more about how they work um that is an option as is rum tasting so here's a photo about rum tasting so it's rum tasting. I think this one might have been, yes, from Cartagena. Is it specific to a certain region or is it all over the country? So rum is more for, I mean, there's different liquors from different parts of Colombia. Rum is going to be more a, for the Caribbean coast. Um, there's a lot of history around rum. So when we do, and, and, and actually Colombian rums are becoming award-winning rums around the world. Um, so what we do in these rum tastings is learning, it's not just drinking, it's learning about the history, about the culture, the story of each rum, right? Each, each, each brand has its own unique stories and meanings. So it's very interesting. And you learn how the distillation works. 
in how to actually identify a good rum. So forget about, you know, the classic Bacardi's that you put in your mojitos. These are very, <laughs> very premium, exquisite rums. But we can also get a good mojito somewhere if we want one. Oh, yes, definitely. Actually, yesterday we we're testing a new mixology course. Oh, um, really? With a very cool um, bartender. So that's a okay, new good. Mojitos are one of my favorite things to make, that and sangria. So I'm game. Um, so the food, these are just a few photos from a couple of the accommodations we're going to talk about in a minute. But just to show people that it's a highly elevated, you can have street food that's delicious or eat in the markets, but you can also go out and have world-class meals at restaurants with famous chefs. Exactly. Um, okay, let's touch on, um, again, culture. All of this is sort of encompassing of culture, but street art and graffiti art is something I'm fascinated by. I love seeing it in different cities. Um, this is an example from Cartagena um, where they have street art and you tell us they have great art studios. They have great fashion boutiques. Um, I mean, Cartagena is sort of a blend and a mix of all of these things. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, um, it's been, we, you know, we say that after the peace process was signed and Colombia has been going through this kind of like artistic revolution, um, before we would always be looking outwards, you know, European fashion, you know, North American and, or you know, Asian food, everything was kind of like what is happening elsewhere. And now we're all focusing about what is Colombian. So Colombian fashion, Colombian design, Colombian art, Colombian gastronomy. So it's a very interesting time in our history. Yeah. And um, lucky for all of us. Okay. So this is an example of um, the coffee plantation area of Colombia. And, you know, going out there to have a little bit more, again, rural experience in nature is a great compliment to being in Cartagena and seeing the city. And um, tell us a little bit about um, the museums in Bogota or Medellin. You can go see Botero's sculptures and other things. Exactly. So there's some really cool um, museums, particularly in Bogota and Medellin. In Bogota, the, you know, the three main ones are the Gold Museum. That's the largest, the world's uh, largest um, a collection of gold artifacts, of pre-Columbian gold artifacts. So it's a fascinating place to learn about these, um, a, the, the, the communities they inhabited, not just Colombia, but, you know, the Andean region, um, at the South, sorry, South, Northern South America, which is really interesting. Um, and everyone absolutely loves it. We can do just a normal visit with a really cool expert, or um, we can also do after hour visits where we can organize cocktails and dinners. Then, for example, there is the Botero Museum, which is actually Fernando Botero's personal collection. And it includes his own um, pieces of art, but also pieces of art from other artists like Dali, Monet, and a number of renowned international artists and Colombian artists. So it's a very cool place. And these, you know, the cost is minimal to enter to these museums. So it's very open to the public. Mm -hmm. And they have the National Museum, which is a combination of everything in Bogota. And then the, the Medellin, if you can't do Botero in Bogota, in Medellin, the Antioquia Museum has an incredible a wing dedicated only to Botero and you have actually some of his most renowned pieces of art there. So if you're a big Botero fan, this is the place to go. I don't know why, but I love his work. I love, you know, they happen to have voluptuous chubby type forms to them. And um, they just seem very, I don't know, um, happy or, you know, it just seems like it's a, a unique look and style to it. That's for sure. Yes. Um, okay, a little bit about over-the-top ideas. We touched on this earlier. There's a variety of options to take helicopters around Colombia, and it's really nice because you can see so much of the topography from the air. Um, in particular, like my client did, making the trip shorter to go from Medellin to Guatape and spending the day there and then taking a helicopter back is a great option. Um, do you, oh, here's an example. So. This is El Pañol in the distance, which is the 600 steps you were telling us about. And this is down by the lake with the villa close by that, you know, you could have for the day and go out on the water and then go hike up El Pañol. Exactly, exactly. And the great thing about helicopters is not just, 
it makes the the time shorter but it's there's some very special places where you can actually get incredible views so imagine having that view from a helicopter of the lake or going inside Chicamocha Canyon which is the previous slide so going inside the canyon in a helicopter or going on top of the Sierra Nevada to go see the ancient terraces of a, the lost city which is um it's like the Machu Picchu of Colombia was built 600 years before Machu Picchu it takes three days walking to get there but it takes 20 minutes no 12 minutes on a helicopter to get there from one of our lodges so it's a very cool way to really explore the country and just get the most magnificent views of of these landscapes mm -hmm. beautiful um before we get to accommodations, actually, I'd love to talk about a little bit, a few of your favorite places. So I have a list here because I know we planned many of them for my client who was there last fall. And I was comparing notes with, with what we had on her itinerary and what I had as the list of your favorites. I'm like, pretty much we got her going to almost every single one of them, you know, lunch and dinner and after hours every day. So maybe let's start in Cartagena. Do you have a couple of favorite rooftops or restaurants that, that are your favorite? Yes. So some of our favorite rooftops are definitely, for example, El Quimico. Um, this is a phenomenal place because uh, it's actually was ranked one of the top 100 um, a bars in the world. And they've been working with really cool ingredients that they grow themselves. Their concept is all about Colombian mixology. So it's a very exciting place. Um, and then we also have another really fun rooftop called uh, townhouse, which is just around the corner from our office, conveniently. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all good music, good cocktails, good drinks. And it's today, mixology in Colombia is not the, you know, the sugary drinks. It's, you know, really cool, conceptual. They all okay. have cheeky meanings. It's a very fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll add in, Solele is in Cartagena. So that is something that should definitely go on your list if you're there. Indeed. Um, and then, and by the way, yeah, my client went to, I think, every one of them you just mentioned. And what about in Medellin? Medellin? Well, Medellin is a really fun place. and But, you know, the, the dining scene there is just out of this world. You have, um, you know, El Cielo. They have, they've just opened up a restaurant and... Um, sorry, they, they, they've had a restaurant and just opened up a hotel. And it's an incredible place um, just because... It's basically like a you know traveling through the different regions of Colombia through gastronomy. Um, then you have Carmen, Carmen Angel, and her husband Rob Pevitz. They're you know two renowned Colombian chefs, and they have basically been you know exploring different regions of Colombia, bringing remote ingredients. Um, and they have multiple restaurants. We just did this like really cool chef's table experience with them. It's like 16 courses, and it's just the most incredible flavors and stories. So the dining scene in Medellin is definitely a must for foodies. Okay. And remind me, is there's a Carmen and a Carmen XO. Is that correct? Yes. So there's Carmen, which is the normal restaurant, and then Carmen XO is like a bit of a private section where you have a much more intimate experience with your chef. So it's their chef cooking, and you can sit at the chef's table, like at the bar, or at your own table if it's a bigger group. And he's basically just serving you directly, telling you exactly, preparing things in front of you. Love it's it. a very cool experience. Very unique. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll keep going because otherwise we'll run out of time again. Um, El Cielo, you just mentioned. So if we transition to accommodations, like you said, they have a restaurant and a hotel with a beautiful rooftop pool, obviously. Um, and it's, it's pretty small. Do you know off the top of your head how many rooms they have? 28 rooms. So it's very boutique. It's very, very personalized. You know, you walk in and everyone knows your name. It's very, very nice um, place. Yeah. And a great place to hang out on the rooftop or for your teenagers to hang out on the rooftop when um, they're tired. from. And the pool is heated. So you can spend, you know, enjoy a really nice sunset there. Okay. We have more pictures of nice sunsets coming up too. Um, in Cartagena, Casa San Augustine, I think. Is Casa San Augustine a Relais Chateau? It is not Relais Chateau, but it is Virtuoso, leading hotels of the world. Okay. Um, you know, it's also a 32 bedroom property, very so intimate, nice. very cute. All the bedrooms are totally different because it's basically three colonial mansions that were joined together to create the hotel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every time you get a chance to stay somewhere, we always go there. 
Yeah. And I think that was where I was going to stay if we were coming in. And I think when you compare, contrast it with, for example, there's also a Sofitel in Cartagena, but it's bigger, it has a bigger pool, a bigger spa and that sort of thing. So it really depends what you're looking for. Exactly. For example, the, the Sofitel Santa Clara, it's also a stunning historic building. It used to be a convent. The gardens are so amazing. However, it's place, for example, where we say it's great for kids to be able to run around, for people who need a gym. So, you know, different hotels for different types of clients and different interests. Yeah. And different time, you know, if they're coming with their spouse or significant other versus a group of friends. Um, okay. So here, pronounce this for me. Casa Oropendola? Oropendola. Yes. Oropendola is a bird, actually. Okay. It's the birds that build the nests at hand. Um, and it's beautiful. And which region is this one in? This is in Sierra Nevada, the Santa Marta. This is a, a, a stunning mountain range on the Caribbean coast. And the house is basically located at 1,500 meters above sea level. And you're surrounded by cloud forests and coffee plantations. So we have our own coffee plantation. And you have a stunning view of the ocean below. So it's a very unique ecosystem place that's the view yeah thank you and um you know it's a great place for people who want to do bird watching because this is you have over 20 endemic species just in this mountain range a great place for trekking lots of waterfalls and places people who want to experience the coffee culture and people who just want to go up and relax to yoga read we had Susan Sarandon there for a week just doing yoga and relaxing mm -hmm. you know these are people who want to get away and and just chill out and yeah read a book and for those of you who are listening and not looking at this picture, it's worth checking out, you know, go on YouTube and watch this part of it to see the stunning sunset from the terrace outside where there's a very colorful hammock to lay in. There's a little fire pit going on and uh, someone enjoying some probably delicious red wine. So um, definitely a great way to end the day when you're on vacation. Indeed. Now, this is also another remote place. Tell us a little bit about this. So this is Korokora Camp. This is, um, it's, a, it's a lovely place. It's actually on hold right now, but it's reopening soon. Um, but this is one of the stunning properties in, in um, Los Janos region. And it's, it was opened specifically for people who are interested in wildlife and having that you know, nature experience, seeing animals, bird watching, going horseback riding with genital cowboys. So it's a very special, fun place for people who like adventure, nature, and being in much more remote places. Mm -hmm. And so here's an example of going horseback riding and seeing the capybaras on your trip running through the, the wetlands. <laughs> exactly. I can't imagine what that would be like. That'd be fun. Um, and it's almost like you're in Africa where they have sundowners in the afternoon next to the lake while you're watching the sunset. Exactly. Very and nice music. Yeah, so tell us about, are these some of the cowboys or are these just musicians that came in? These are some of, well, you know, everyone, you know, the Daneros, it's, you know, that's how they call themselves if you're from the region. And everyone to an extent identifies themselves as being to an extent a cowboy um, or a cowgirl. Uh, and this in particular is a group of music. So it's the teacher and the kids who are learning music. And the music here, it's called Horopo. And it's very, it's very fun. They play it very particularly with a harp maracas and a small drum so it's a very and a, and a guitar sorry and uh it's very fun when you dance it's lots of twirling around so we always invite guests to you know take part in the dancing and they love interacting with the musician it's a very unique music and very fun dancing very fun um and so stunning so this last picture of um the camp and for those of you, who, again, who are listening, this is really like a mobile tented camp like you would have on safari. So it's definitely a little bit more rustic accommodations, but the luxury is in the place and looking up at the night sky with the, you know, millions, billions of stars looking down on you, which would be so peaceful. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and Casa del Presidente, tell us a little bit about the history of this house. So this house is it's, it's a historic place because it was um, basically the, the home of one of the most renowned presidents of Colombian history, uh, Belisario Betancourt. He was a poet, an artist, um, and basically um, the new owners of the house have opened it, you know, as Casa Presidente to welcome guests who want something much more peaceful. There's only five rooms, so it's a private villa, it's a full takeover. 
stunning gardens. Um, and, you know, as with everything that we like to promote, incredible gastronomy and, you know, full service type of private villa. Mm -hmm. And I think the last picture is one of my favorites of the whole show. And that is the view from the terrace at Casa del Presidente looking out over the region, which is just magnificent. Exactly. That is breakfast at Casa del Presidente. I mean, no complaints, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> would you say, so let's just sort of talk about before we go, some takeaway tips. Best times to be in Colombia? You know, does it vary a little bit by region? What would you recommend to people who are thinking about a trip? Okay, so I say try to come for at least 10 days, um, you know, if you can more, amazing. But the great thing about Colombia is that it's so diverse. So um, try to at least jump between three to four destinations. Um, each one is so unique. Pick a city. I mean, maybe it's Bogota, maybe it's Maine, maybe it's both. But do a city, live that, you know, cosmopolitan art gastronomic, the markets, like it's so exciting and, and so cool and trendy. Some people are surprised and, you know, my, my, my in-laws are French and they say, like, how cool are restaurants? You know, they're much cooler than in France. I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> um, so it's actually a very design cool place, both cities. So pick a city, then go to the countryside. I love promoting the, the Andes Mountains, whether it's the coffee region or Barichada or, or one of these small towns, countryside, mountains, so many cool experiences. And then head out to the Caribbean coast. Um, Cartagena is a must for everyone. It's just such a you know fun colonial town. You can walk everywhere. So much culture and each place has such a different culture. You really feel like you're traveling to different countries within one. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely do Cartagena, do a day trip. Or maybe if you have time, spend a few days at the end at one of the beach hotels. There's a few new cool little properties opening up. Or if you have extra time, head out to the jungles of Tyrona. So the cool thing, again, is try to make it diverse. Um, you know, come in and try to experience that, that really the contrasts of the country, because that's what makes Colombia so exciting. Mm -hmm. And just out of curiosity, around like Christmas time, a lot of Colombians go on vacation as well, I presume. Uh, and so does that make some of these destinations in, you know, the U.S. December holidays when many people might be thinking of coming to Colombia? Is it also the demand very high because of Colombians going on vacation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Colombia, you know, it's a hot spot for New Year's. It's warm all year round. The weather at New Year's is great. You know, it's dry, it's beautiful, it's green. So you definitely want to book in early. Okay. And then, so would you say, what, what are your highest seasons from when to when? So highest season is going to be like ultra high is going to be 26 to the 2nd, 26 of December to the 2nd of January. Then you're going to have like high, it's going to be maybe... 15th of December to 15th, you know, that, that kind of like those shoulders to the 15th of January. Mm -hmm. But then, for example, now March is basically all booked up and August is getting quite busy already. So, right. Um, I'm coming in September. Yeah. So I think you and I were talking before we came on today. We're both, you know, every day have visibility into what seems like um, kind of the rebound from the lack of travel over the last couple of years January, February this year has gotten quite crazy and things are booking up very far in advance. So for people who are thinking about Colombia or any trip, it's definitely something to think about earlier than perhaps you thought you needed to before. Exactly. I mean, yes, you know, we can, you know, right now we're working on a request for like February 19th. So we managed to find some availabilities, but we do recommend to book in advance to make sure yeah. we can guarantee great properties, great experiences, and overall, you know, an amazing trip. Okay, great. Well, Christina, thank you so much. This has been a delight for me. I love your country. I love your culture. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to be there in September. I'm eating at Salele. I'm going to, you know, the beach clubs. I'm going to go on the water. I hope I get to go to Guatape. So um, I'm excited for all of it. And I hope that some people who are listening today who maybe even never thought of going to Colombia can see what a rich and diverse country it is. And it's an amazing destination for couples, friends, families, anybody really. Indeed. Thank you, Mimi, so much for sharing the Colombia love with the rest of the world. Of we course. Really appreciate it. 
All right. We look forward to seeing you in September. You and I will be in touch. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks to everyone.